we're now live from downtown Mill Bay. I, I don't know if I said the bathroom policy for this class. Did I last last day? Okay, you are in grade ten. Um, you are physically mature in size and hopefully uh, mature in mind. In the province of British Columbia, you're known as a mature minor. You can actually make your own medical decisions without consent of your parents. Um, you can have an abortion, provided you are able to become uh, pregnant. Uh, you can walk up to the pharmacy, get the morning after pill. The fact that you have to ask me to go to the bathroom seems weird. Don't ask me. I don't want to know. I want you to get up quickly and quietly. It's a class, uh, and you're paying a heck of a lot of money for it. Um, so I also want you to return quickly as soon as you can. So if you're going to go away for like half an hour or visit the health center or do a trip somewhere, that you have to let me know about. But if you're just going to the bathroom quickly, you don't have to let me know. I do ask that you leave your phone behind um, because that will turn two minutes into 20 minutes fairly quickly um, and then return back. But you don't, if I, you get up and you just walk out, I'm assuming you're not upset with me and that you're just going to the bathroom. Now, if there is upsetting, something that is upsetting in class, I'd appreciate you letting me know. As, you, as I said, this is a science and ethics class, which means we will be discussing ethics, which means we will on occasion discuss some fairly horrible things. Um, and people are allowed to say horrible things when they're working through ideas. So remember, we're attacking the idea sometimes, not the person, not sometimes, always. Uh, we're never attacking the person. And some people may say an idea and then realize just how bad it was. And I don't know what it is. But I have frequently gotten the idea, um, and I just now start this so that you're aware of this. If your idea to fix a major moral issue because people are dying is to kill even more people, you probably would should question your assumptions. Uh, so we have global warming. Um, I used to do a little thing. I don't do this particular one anymore, which is why I use it as an example. How can we, you know, morally, how should we tackle it? And always there'd be a good 5 to 10% would you say, you know, a good short war, maybe a thermonuclear war, kill off a lot of our population, and we wouldn't have to worry about global warming anymore because we wouldn't be used in as many resources. And yes, that works on a practical, there's less people basis. But we're worried about global warming because it's hurting people. And if your solution to hurting people is to hurt more people, there's something fundamentally wrong. Also be aware, sometimes you just come up with those ideas and you blurt them out without thinking them through. And then all of a sudden, everybody else goes, what are you doing? That's perfectly fine. It's a classroom of ideas uh, and you can certainly come up with that idea. Um, we're now going to work through this quiz. You should have a true or false uh, um, beside all of them. Um, I think I'm going to get a few of these up. Because uh, I like someone on the other screen. So, anybody have any questions on them first? Where they went away, they finished it off, they didn't understand any of the words. Yes. Can you elaborate? An individual have sole rights over their own voice? What yes. Soul? soul rights means individual rights. So, you are the only person that have rights over your bodies. Soul means one. Okay. So, it means like your parents don't have rights to your body. Yeah. Uh, interesting uh, dilemma. Um, as we get better. Um, uh, in technology, uh, um, the U.S., in terms of its uh, preemie technology, is really, really good. Uh, they can save babe. They have the cutting-edge technology of saving babies who are born earlier all the time. Um, and it's getting farther and farther back. And Japan is getting really good at in vitro fertilization and then implantation of a developing embryo. So they have found something the implantation grow, grows a little bit better if you let it develop a little bit outside the womb. Uh, one of the reasons you get those TV shows like uh, um, I had 30,000 babies all at once is because when they, it's usually due to IVF, in vitro fertilization, because most of them die after they implant them. So they implant like 15. But every once in a while you get those people where like eight of them took and they had octuplets. Uh, that's the reason we have so many now. Um, so in Japan, they're trying to let them develop a bit more and plant fewer so that in chance of that goes down. But eventually, those two technologies are going to hit and we're going to be able to grow people outside of the womb. You just go buy the baby making bag from Walmart, hang it up in a closet for nine months, hook up the nutrient machine, make sure it's nice and dark, grow a baby. Hmm. And that's going to uh, um, have a whole different impact on uh, what we do uh, um, socially and otherwise. Anyway, 
I'll leave you with that for now because that I don't know why I mentioned it. it has nothing to do with anything uh, by the thought of it because you said so. Now, how we're marking this is none of your answers are right or wrong, but pairs of the answers can be right or wrong because they can be contradictory. Uh, so for 1 and 12, check your answers. If you've said there are no m objective uh, moral standards, moral judgments are an expression of a particular culture, this is known as relativism, um, in which a culture can dictate what's right and wrong. If you believe that, then you would not be able to say that acts of genocide stand as a, a testament to uh, humankind's ability to do great evil. If you believe that morals are relative to a culture, then what you're saying is that acts of genocide aren't wrong, they're just wrong for you. That culture grew up with genocide. It's okay for them. Mm -hmm. Now, if you wrote, if you wrote true for this, so essentially these can't be the same. That that's wrong. If you wrote true for there, you have to be false. If you wrote false to this then you probably would r uh, write true to that unless for some reason you don't think uh, um, genocide is bad. I don't know. Maybe you think other things are bad. There is a chance of that. I mean, genocide is wrong, but, you know, also, what about texting someone to break up with them? Terrible. Any questions about that one? But those two things can be, like, completely different. How can they be completely different? They're linked. However, if you said true to that, can you say true to this? Yes. How? Because, I don't know, like that, the first one could like be something that you do part of your culture. Right? Yeah, okay. But, okay, but they're different. Mm. No, they're different. There's huh? acts of genesis like that. Okay, if, if, if in my culture, um, we don't eat pork on Wednesdays, um, and we go to like school on Saturdays, and I have a lot of these unique rules. We have certain types of dress, uh, and we also uh, think that anybody who eats pork on Wednesdays is going straight to hell, like they're bad people. That's a great evil, according to me. Um, but I'm a cultural relativist. It's right in my culture. I totally agree. It's not wrong in yours. We can live together, coexist. You can eat pork on Wednesdays. I don't mind because you're not part of my culture. They're different. You're the type that likes to commit genocide. That's fine for you. Just not one of my things. Um, so what the number one is saying, if you agree with number one, you're saying that there is no absolute right and wrong. It depends on the culture. Now, if you don't say true to number one, if you say false, then you are saying that there are things that are wrong no matter what culture you believe in. So, like, if you believe that slavery is always wrong, then it was, it's always wrong for everybody at all times at any point in history. Well, how does it not work? If, if you went back in time, let's say to when slavery was legal, would slavery still be wrong? It's Some still of you are saying no. Time, like, it's still yeah. wrong, but people normalized it. Yeah, people, it's normal. Yeah. There was a time in which people couldn't do calculus because calculus wasn't invented yet. But if you went back in time, would calculus still work? Would it still be true? Yeah. yeah. So if you think that ethics are absolute, that there's things that you can do wrong, then they should always be true. Even if nobody knows it, they can still be wrong. It's a bit like math. However, if you don't believe that, you think, no, it's totally relative, then you would say, oh, yeah, no, they were right. So all we have to do to make slavery legal today would be to just change our laws, and then it would be fine morally. And some of you are shaking your heads. Um, yeah, it seems a bit odd to say that. Um, and it seems wrong, so just hold on to that for the moment, because we'll examine this again. The whole idea of whether something's objective or subjective, whether it's always wrong or just wrong sometimes, depending on, on your background or uh, something, is, what, is something that we're going to uh, go through a lot. Uh, but that's what number one means. Uh, if there's no objective standard, then depending on your background, anything could be right. It's just up to you. There's, if you don't believe in taking infants 
and killing them if they're the wrong gender, that's, that's not wrong for you. But other cultures haven't done practice, have practiced that uh, in the past. And if they do that and it's an integral part of their culture and you think, well, then that's okay, then you're saying that inf infanticide is sometimes okay. All you have to do is just switch cultures. So these, this is a bit of a contradiction. Also, as I think I mentioned last day, you don't have to believe me. You can say, Mr. Neufeld, this is nonsense. Uh, those two are completely different. Um, hopefully, uh, maybe I'll convince you in the future. Maybe I will never. I, I don't mind either way. But I will say that all of these, this is not, I didn't come up with this list. This is from a book of, this is a philosophy course. Uh, this is uh, something some uh, um, philosophy professors put together to test classes to see what contradictory beliefs might you have. Uh, next question. Uh, one, there are no particular truths about matter of fact. Truth is always relative to particular cultures and individuals. If this is true, then this one cannot be true. Because if there is something that is a historical reality, that is true for everyone in all places and all times, and we know it's a historical reality, then there is something called an objective truth. History can have truth to it. If everything depends on particular cultures and individuals in terms of what is objective truth about them, uh, then, then people can deny the Holocaust and it's fine for them. This is exactly the same question. It's just instead of being about ethics, it's about factual history. Yes? And there are really, there are, there are ways that history or how we talk about the, we're, we can come up with different facts. What is um, the second largest country in the world? Canada. Canada is what the Canadians say. Has anybody in this room been in a country where they've listed a different country? No? If you uh, are in a class in China, China defines themselves as the second largest country in the world. And they're just as right as the Canadians. If you take our total area, we are the second largest country in the world. But in China, they go, why are you counting all those stupid lakes? We don't count the oceans as part of our territory. They only count the land. And Canada has a lot of lakes. Ontario's full of them. We need to start digging them up and filling them in. Anyway, um, so if you go by just pure land area, China's second largest in the world. So you can get different facts depending on how you define things. That's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about here is a fact in which you both agree on the same definition. Question? No? Question? I was going to say, if you take the water out of those lakes, there's still land. So well, you take the water, everywhere. if you take the water out of the ocean, there's land too, but... Most, the different. Great Lakes, the lakes don't. Is a, lake is on a smaller scale. So size is, I, I agree the with you. Connect yeah. Everything. Yeah. Lakes size control. absolutely makes a difference. And as someone who's six foot five, definitely you should do what I say just because I'm bigger. Yeah. 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 yeah and, and, and they're not including ponds that dry up every year, permanent lakes. So Canada's, Canada's land area is actually increasing because our lands, our lakes are drying up. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah, so maybe eventually we'll be second largest by that definition too. Yeah. So this one was talking about whether or not morality is relative. Do you believe in absolute right and wrong? I'll test this later with puppies. I find puppies works better than humans. Um, and then are there actually absolute truths? Um, there are two branches of history in terms of how it's taught. There is the classical idea that you're probably exposed to in social studies here, in which history is a series of events that occurs after each other. There's definite facts that occur, and you can learn those. And there's a lot of subjective interpretation as to the reasons, and you can talk about the different people involved. There's also an area of history that does not believe that there is any objective truth, and it's just who tells the story. And that story is true to the listener and to the um, reader, and that version of history is just as true as any other version of history. There is no facts in history. I was taught Canadian history by someone who believed in that particular type of history. It is a, um, a, um, a way of knowing history that they use. They only look at interpretation. Um, I was used, I asked in the middle of class, because we were reading 
a historical romance novel, and we were treating it as a primary source because our professor thought, well, the author probably did their research, and I read through it, it's good enough. Whereas in a different type of history, you would want the primary source to be someone who had actually checked these things or had been a, um, someone who was actually there. So if you believe in absolute truth, then you cannot say eight is true. But if you don't, then you easily can. It's a weird kind of quiz. Um, there exists an all-powerful, loving, and good goddess. This is known in philosophy as the problem of evil. Um, famous philosophical problem. Uh, to allow an innocent child to suffer needlessly when one could easily prevent it is morally reprehensible. So if you think, if you have answered that this one is true, that is a contradiction to this one. Why is that a contradiction? Yeah. The God and loving God would help the child. And some absolute horrific things have happened uh, um, in history. And, and, but if there is just one child locked away in a closet somewhere that someone is doing bad things to, which, given what we know about uh, certain people who have been arrested and have found out about, that is absolutely happening right now. And if someone has the ability to intervene and they're not, then they're morally reprehensible. Yeah. What if you put, like, undecided for four? Oh, um, then you didn't answer the question. It's either true or false. You can't be undecided about that. Why not? Well, Why, wh how are you, like, if you don't know, then, like, how are you... Oh, this is a logic thing. Uh, if you don't know, the answer is that it's false. Oh. Yeah. Um, and, and this is not a... Um, this is not a religion thing. You're allowed, I'm not saying you're not allowed to be agnostic and, and say you don't know. There's a perfectly valid a philosophical position. Uh, um, but for most practical things, like if I said there is a unicorn, no, forget the unicorn. I have a dragon. It sits on my left shoulder. I know nothing. I know no chemistry. I know no science. I know no ethics, no philosophy. But it whispers in my ear and tells me what to say. I really value its presence because it got me all through university without having to study. It's invisible, which is why you can't see it. Would you believe that that dragon exists? No. Why not? Yeah, but I told you it's invisible. Well, I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm saying what it tells me, so you have my testimony. Yeah, I told you. Yeah. yeah so we know you don't know anything. Okay. Maybe you do know stuff. I no, I'm telling you, I don't know. How do you know what someone knows unless they tell you they don't know? No. You don't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like. Okay. How could you test if there's a dragon there? Oh, there's a history around the dragon. Oh, show you? No, no, I can take you to people who will attest that the dragon is there. Where's the, where's the Bible? Mr. Snow will confirm the existence of the dragon. Where's the 400-year-old dragon Bible? The 400-year-old dragon Bible. If you wait a couple hours, I think I could probably get you a couple pages of a dragon Bible. Would you believe it if I could give you a couple pages? No. You're thinking I'm deceitful. Okay, the dragon is right in this room listening to you right now. And it's on my shoulder. What else could you do to test for it? Yeah. The dragon's name is Fred. Thank you for asking. He quite likes that. Yes. No. He's he paid attention in university, so he just knows what someone who pays attention knows. No, no, because he doesn't know you. I could send him to your room and just have him watch you. That's how, I, as a house parent, I know everything. Can you see? Yes? Does the dragon have, like, a physical presence, or is it just, like... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's sitting on my shoulder. Can you, like, feel it? Can I? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. He jumped out of the way. Yeah. Yes? Can you, like, let other people see the dragon, or is that the dragon's choice? That's the dragon's choice. He's 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 he's. he's I, I could ask. Could you ask politely? Yeah, no. No. He's very shy. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, sorry, what? Where does bread like eating? Spaghetti. So if I put some spaghetti there, will it show up? Well, the yeah. Well, oh, yeah. 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 Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that yeah. morally correct? To kill the dragon? Yes. Yeah. No! Why? It's a thinking, intelligent being. No, but it's all about cultures. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> well, apparently for you, I don't necessarily believe that. I haven't said what I believe, but I don't want you to kill my dragon. That's hypocritical. I can't teach without it. Yes. No, he's real for everybody at all times. What? You're just choosing to disbelieve. Well, there and then there. So yeah? Not Pardon? And you see the dragon. Yeah. Not right now. But like when he's on your shoulder. No, he's invisible right now. To you as well. Yeah, well, my eyes are different than yours. What do you think he is? Like a puff the magic dragon? No, he's oh, invisible. No. <laughs> yeah. I don't have weird eyes or something. He's a dragon. Maybe he, he's like, an invisible he dragon. Oh, no, I'm going to I'm gonna go to people I haven't touched. So I'm going to skip you for a second. I won't forget about you. And I'm just going to go around because I haven't heard you. Like, at times, yes, but when he's worried about being seen, he selectively lightens the load so you can't see the indentation. Good thought, though. Uh, what color is he? Oh, he's pink. Yeah. Oh, he's not invisible all the time to me. Oh, no, but before, didn't you just say that he's invisible? Yeah, you said he's invisible all the time. Yeah. No, no. When you started this, yeah. and now you're changing up, so. Yeah, he's just a magic dragon. I misspoke. <laughs> When there's nobody else around, sometimes he likes to curl up at my feet and turn visible. Mm. There was no, there was something. Yep. Yeah. Well, first of all, you might hit me, and he's pretty. If he's pretty good at dodging, but he can also turn himself selectively intangible, so the rock would just pass through him. Yeah. Karen. Yeah, you had your hand up, didn't you? Oh, okay. Yeah. Pink. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Um, are you the only person who has a dragon? Oh, no. No. Do I have a dragon? No. Are you sure? Does yeah. Mr. Snow have a dragon? No. Do you have like a club? Mr. Snow does not have a dragon. He is something much worse than a dragon. Yes. No, 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 no. Behind you. If I pray to the dragon, will he ask me? It's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, his family's fairly small, and like if you're if, if they're not in the same room, they're not going to hear you. They're not magic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who? Okay. Kieran, you had a question before, and I didn't call on it. Does Fred have a religion? Red? Fred. 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 I've never asked him that before. Yes. Uh, when when things phase through him, is he like just super talented at going to like right spot where the atoms of the object just like go through him, or is that like not a thing? That's a really good question, um, and I like the chem like chemistry involved. Yeah, he doesn't know how he can do it. In the same way, we don't know how we can see. We know nothing about photons and lenses. We just see. He just does it. If I yeah. were to like die, would I see him in the afterlife or no? No, because he's alive. <laughs> yeah, he's not a ghost. Back and then there. Oh, we're friends. I feed him spaghetti. Oh, he just showed up one day when I was like three. No. Well, I have a dragon that can see your dragon. No, you don't. He just told me you didn't. Well, he doesn't know Clearly, he you just made people. that up right now. No, you didn't I walk didn't. into the room. I came in here, told you I had a dragon. Nobody mentioned it. I obviously I'm telling the truth. Okay, but you were clear. Don't play it's games with me, kid. It's a bird. It's, it's a bird. bird. Yeah. It's a bird. It's a plane. I, it's but a dragon. now, now I feel like you're like wiffle waffing here, and and you're going back and forth because you said you had a dragon. Now it's bird. Well, yeah, yes. And then I'll go over there. Oh, yeah, I would be so, I'd have to retire right away. Yeah, I couldn't teach. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm going to the hands. Archie? Am I? Okay, number one, 
question. Schizophrenic does not mean uh, multiple personality disorder, in case you're implying that we had both personalities. However, it does mean you can have some hallucinations um, and see things. And the answer is no. Because ever since, ever since the incident, we've all agreed I shouldn't go on the medication. Yes. Is your dragon, like, ugly or attractive? <laughs> That's very judgy. In dragon terms. I think the dragon is beautiful. Yeah, is it a baddie? Yeah. <laughs> a baddie? <laughs> and then there. <laughs> Sorry, no, 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 quiet. I'm going to take the last question here after this one, then we're done. You can't be schizophrenic because you make spaghetti and the spaghetti is eaten. So. <laughs> nice. I've got a conversion. I, I make the dragon spaghetti. The spaghetti is eaten, therefore, dragon real. No, no, no. You have the last question. No. Is that, was that your last question? No, my question was, what's the weakness? What's the weakness? Yeah. I don't actually know that's true. I know that's true in movies. Yeah, it's true in movies. Yeah, true. Okay. So what's the weakness? Like, how do you kill the dragon? Weirdly, he's not telling me. Did you yeah. watch How to Train Your Dragon? To I did. Dragon? No, no, it didn't work. I didn't have to get fish. Like, that's weird. You have to get fish and, like, feed it fish. Okay. Um, I think... I think that demonstrates, even if I say I have a dragon, even if I have all these reasons why you can't see it, you don't believe me. Um, this, is called the bur this is called the burden of proof. Um, and if you want to look up a little bit more about this... Um, I'm going to get a different pen here. Um, Karl Popper is a famous uh, philosopher of science. And what he said, and not that long ago, he came up with the idea that to for something to be scientific and to be regarded as fact, it had to be falsifiable. No matter what you said, the dragon had a reason for you not to be able to prove it was there. And what science says, it doesn't say that that means it's necessarily false, but it says we assume it to be false until we have the evidence otherwise. And if there is no way to prove it false, we regard it as untrue. Because if you're regarding as something as untrue, if it is in fact true, you're certainly going to be smacked uh, in the face with it. If you think unicorns aren't real, you will die at the first unicorn crossing. And if you say unicorns aren't real and they aren't real, then you will continue to exist as if nothing really was wrong with the universe. Um, so we assume things to be false. So well, the reason you can be agnostic, because we make a special exception for um, religious things. So some people say, well, I don't know. And it's a very open and uh, um, tolerant way of saying, you can believe what you want. I haven't seen any evidence. I'm undecided. But on a practical basis, for things like unicorns and werewolves, and uh, um, does everybody know that pretty much every supernatural creature was disproven in the last 20 years? Like, we know there is no Sasquatch now. Did you say pretty yeah. much everyone? Yeah, creatures? pretty much. So which ones are real? Well, I, I haven't gone through a list and picked what them out, but what happened in the last 20 years that disproved any of these... Like, we know there's no Ogopogo. We know that there's no Bigfoot. Uh, we're pretty much sure there's no ghosts. Yeah. We know that there's no current Megalodons. How do you know? If the Sasquatch isn't real, then can you explain the video of one tossing down a hill? Yes. Man dressed up in a cock. Man, yeah. Or, or people. If what happened in the last 20 years that we can say with pretty much certainty there is the odd there's the famous one of like bigfoot walking away and people have looked at that it's probably a guy in a suit uh, it's a really fuzzy uh, film what has happened in the last 20 years that has allowed us to accumulate the evidence to say pretty much none of those things are real what technology you're all carrying it with you right now yeah there's there's an asteroid strike over russia um, a number of years ago, it was caught like it was incredibly rare. Uh, it came over, it existed for a fraction of a section. It actually hit the earth. There was a boom caught by multiple uh, car cams. Everybody's walking around with a recording device in their, pro uh, in their pocket. By now, we would have good video, not just blurry video. 
If you see blurry video, it's probably someone faking it because we know how easy it is to fake that. Um, everybody's walking around with something they can use to prove anything all the time. If those things existed, we would have good video of it. Unicorns were around, we'd see them. Bigfoot was out there, we'd be hunting them down uh, to use their pelts for ashtrays or something. like. We would know. Yes? Like, how do you know if the Megalodon isn't real? Like, this is a, like, the ocean isn't fully... The, the ocean is a bit harder because things could hide. Yeah. But we know how much they'd have to eat. And we know how much food we're taking out of the ocean. If they were alive, they're dead now. Yeah. Because <laughs> we're, we're, we're eating up a lot of the food. Yes, and then yes. If the Megalodon is alive, if Bigfoot aren't real, then explain the Peter Kane dog training. You'll have to explain that to me maybe a little later. Yes? Yeah. It's just Megalodon's just a big, big shark. Yeah. yeah. Yes? If the Megalodon's not real, can you explain how they made movies about it? It's a good point. It's a good point. Uh, there's also movies with unicorns in them. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I can't. I can't explain it. It's, it's, it's real. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll call you back. Oh, oh, hold it. I just realized. I have a link here. There's something. To, oh, so. Um, the reason why I say you have to answer either true or false is because at, at a fundamental level, you have to. If you're walking through life and you're saying a, you're agnostic and you say you don't really know. Are you practically acting as if there is or isn't? Are you praying? Are you engaging in forms of worship? Are you doing things differently? Um, it, it always makes me a little nervous when someone said, well, yeah, if, there, if religion wasn't real, I would be out robbing and raping everybody. And I'm like, that's the only thing stopping you? Um, not everybody says that, but I have, I have heard it. Um, a little weird. Uh, but... Think about how you're behaving and whether or not it makes a difference. Um, there and then there. Uh, it's, I heard a similar thing of an American saying um, that if Canadian healthcare is free, why don't people, what's, what's stopping people from like jumping off of bridges? Like, <laughs> I, I, I do appreciate the parallels of that. That is interesting. Um, yes. <laughs>
we will go back to here and interesting maybe I'll show it next day but this is certainly going to be annoying if I can't show any videos okay I'll just move on to the next one <clears throat> So the next one up for discussion, voluntary euthanasia should remain illegal. Um, it's not, by the way, illegal in Canada. We have a medical procedure that you can go through and you can request a doctor's help to kill you. You have to undergo through a variety of criteria. Um, so you have to be, uh, be have a terminal illness. Um, you have to uh, um, show that you know all these treatments won't work. Um, and you have to show you're not clinically depressed because that itself needs to be treated. However, they have recently stated they might add that you have a permanent incurable mental illness. They might add that to the things you're allowed to request euthanasia for, which has its own ethical dilemmas. Uh, now, voluntary euthanasia would, would, would also imply that anybody could do that. So that if you wanted to, you could ask someone else for help. Um, it should remain illegal, if you're like, yeah, that should be illegal, then you're saying that you don't have the sole right over your own body. Society has an interest. If you're not allowed to exercise your right over your body, whether it wants to continue to exist or not, then fundamentally, you are allowing other people to have rights over your own body. Questions, concerns? The basic question, is suicide illegal? Not illegal. Like, first of all, they recognize that uh, practically, and the reason it's not illegal is not because they recognize you have sole rights over your body. That may be part of it. But it used to be illegal. Imagine you have someone who's suicidal, and you catch them in the act, and then you put them in jail. That's going to make it worse. Also... That wouldn't say you have sole rights over your body. Someone who's suicidal, though, is often suffering from clinical depression. Clinical depression is not like, you know, my arm got cut off and now I'm sad. Um, or I just got my, my divorced, I'm sad. My spouse or child died, I'm sad. Those will go away with time, and we know a bit more about them. Uh, clinical depression means that you have, uh, um, your brain is acting in such a way that you cannot make rational decisions. And it affects other things than just that. So it's not, most people don't go through life and logically think through an argument. They go, oh, I shouldn't be alive anymore. And then, you know, go out and, and accomplish that. It's usually a result of uh, clinical depression. So we wouldn't want to encourage that. But also, if it was illegal, would people go to doctors and health professionals for help? No, no, because then they report them to the police. So it's not illegal because we want to get them help. Not because necessarily society believes you have sole rights to your body. Yeah. Yeah. They have medications. Yeah. This is often why if someone, um, this is very common in, in scenarios where someone has suffered a, like a tragic loss. And a tragic loss is like the loss of a spouse, of a child. Um, a loss of a limb could be a tragic loss for many people, like losing something major, you get a car accident, you lose your sight. It is, it is common for people to, to go into a depression. Um, but what they do find is you have a set level of happiness. And no matter what happens to you, you usually bounce back. Uh, this is not unusual if you talk about anything other than humans. Puppies are born with a temperament. Some are active, some are happy all the time. You know, some are little Eeyores running around, a little depressed. Everybody has a set temperament. Um, and they're all like that. You're like that. But if something happens to you, it will go up or down. If you win the lottery tomorrow, you're like, $100 million, I'm divorcing my parents, they have no say over what I do, party for the rest of my life! You will be the same happiness you are now in about six months. The money won't matter anymore for your happiness because you just got used to it. If you get your arm cut off and you go into clinical depression, you don't want to live anymore. I can't live without my right arm. I'm a, I was planning on becoming a world-class rower. In six months, you'll probably bounce back. It's about the time it takes. All of those changes. 
But if you have a permanent change that doesn't bounce back, there is something else that's wrong with you, medications to help that. We particularly worry about people like you, because at your age, if you go into clinical depression, you can permanently affect your set point. So it goes on too long and you don't get help, which is why we have helplines. Um, look, um, during uh, COVID, uh, we open up helplines in Canada so that you can text or call, and there's people on the other end who are willing to talk to you to help with mental health, um, because we know that's such a high risk for you. Adults, it happens to, they're more likely to bounce back because their brain has fully developed. But your brain hasn't, and we're really worried about your set point and want to make sure it's going to get there. So if you are experiencing that and you're feeling really uh, um, like, I might need help, do get help. Health center, house parents, um, assistant house parents, BFAs, other classmates. Um, you can, and sorry, now I'm going to the mental, I'm a house parent, so then I'm switching over to the mental health aspect. If you're worried about a friend, um, you can ask them Asking someone if they're clinically depressed or thinking about suicide does not increase the chances of it happening. It might decrease it, because then you'll get them help. Um, so there's a few risks about that. As soon as COVID happened, uh, of course, you know, Ms. Walensky was lost. How will I help uh, children? So she immediately signed up, and she was on the other end of the chat, talking to other students across all, all of Canada. Um, and when you get older, you can volunteer for that. There's people out there who are worried about that. Um, but your happiness level, should bounce back for all of these major changes. So that's why we worry about people who um, have these happening to you. We don't want them to undergo voluntary euthanasia, which is another way of saying suicide, uh, um, with or without help, if there's something that's potentially curable, we can get their brain back to working again. But on the other hand, your point at the back there, even though I've spoken against it now for multiple minutes, if you fundamentally believe you have the soul right over your body, and you, with clear mind and, and, and sound body, decide, I don't want to exist on this planet anymore for logical reasons. There's too many people, and I just want to lessen my impact. Should you not be allowed to go? And we put this in the context of, I have a disease. I'm going to just die in great pain. Sue Rodriguez. Uh, when was she? 1983, the province of British Columbia, before Canada legalized euthanasia, knew that she was going to die in a horrible, painful death. Her, her disease was going to progress, and the pain would increase. And as the pain increased, her ability to move would decrease. So by the time she would want euthanasia, she wouldn't be able to do it herself. So she petitioned the courts to ask a doctor to intervene at that time so she didn't have to do it now. Because now she could. And the, doc, the court said no at the time. That changed about a, dec about a decade later. Uh, it went all the way to the Supreme Court at the time. They said, no, Canada will never do that. Ten years can change their mind. Of course, change your mind all the time. But uh, um, she still had someone help her. We don't know which doctor. Doctors have um, made these decisions, but we do know that there was a, um, a member of parliament who was, he was censored for this for a little bit because he was at a suicide and he was very ill. He refused to report the doctor uh, so that she could actually do it. Um, and their point of view was she has sole rights over her body. She knows what kind of pain she's going to be. Why can't she do this? Um, his name is Stan Robinson. I think he was MLA in Vancouver, I think. I think he was the first gay MLA in Canada, but I could be wrong. Not that that has anything to do with the other things that's about. That got, that got really quiet. Um, but probably kind of depressing. You don't have to put up your hand. How many of you think that it would just be okay if you knew that you were going to die or someone you knew was going to die a horrible, painful death, that it would be okay to allow them to skip the horrible, painful time? That's what Canada's euthanasia is, is involved. You have rights over your body. You can decide how you exit. But it is touchy because people may decide that for mental health reasons. We don't necessarily know we want to do that. There are people who criticize our, our, our program because you can say there is a, a, a woman who is who petitioned to have euthanasia because she does have an incurable disease. She is allergic to almost everything. She can't find housing properly. Um, she can't afford it because she can't work in many places. She does have work. Um, and she's trying to find a way to get housing so she can live there. So she's positioned to have euthanasia, not because the disease is so bad. The disease is so bad because she's poor. 
So she's actually using it because she's poor, not because there isn't truth. And so once you open it up, we have those types of capacities. This got a lot heavier than I perhaps intended. And, but we will bring some of them uh, um, up again. It is always wrong to take another person's life. If you think it's always wrong to kill somebody, then you cannot say that the Second World War was a just war, uh, that the Allies were the good guys, because they went out and killed people on purpose. Those would be a couple of contradictions. And everybody good? No disagreements with that one? If you think it's always wrong to take another person's life, uh, then you can't say that any military action is actually correct to stop anybody. Technically, you, you can't say killing anybody for any reason uh, um, is actually just. There are certain religions that uh, believe that and certain faiths that believe that and philosophies that do. Um, there's a, oh, I can't, just forgot the name of the movie. There's a great movie out there about a um, young man who volunteered for the medical corps in World War II and refused to pick up a gun. Uh, Does anybody know what it's called? Yeah, I think that is. Um, uh, and that happened to a number of conscientious objectors in World War II. Conscientious objectors are people who, uh, and, and people of certain religious faiths, they say it's wrong to all kill, this is what we believe. And so some of them got put into like internment camps. But some of them got, uh, um, uh, managed to get into the medical corps where they would help people. And they would help people on either side. Um, whoever they had access to, um, but they wouldn't pick up a gun and wouldn't participate in, in the war. They would believe it was always wrong to kill. Um, but if you think it's always wrong to kill, then you can't say that you're a good guy. That reminds me of Are We the Baddies video. But given that I can't show you videos, I can't show you that one. Have you not seen the Are We the Baddies video? Maybe next day if I can fix my muting problem. Um, what do we got? Period two, ten fifty-five. We're almost there. Uh, we're almost done with the quiz. Having made a choice, it is always possible that you might have chosen differently if we rewind the clock. Um, if you believe that, then you don't believe in destiny. If you believe in destiny, then you do not believe it would be possible to choose something else. Your choices are fixed, and there's nothing you can do about it. I always find people who believe in destiny trying to convince other people to believe in destiny to be a bit weird. If you believe in destiny, nothing you say would change their mind if they're destined not to change their mind. On the other hand, maybe you're destined to try and convince them anyway. And then in the end, it makes no difference. How many of you think that you can make choices and affect your future? Quite a few. Yeah. A lot of you don't believe in destiny. Your future is not fixed. You can change it. Um, if uh, um, How many of you believe that in the past, if you rewound and you had exactly the same information, you didn't have modern knowledge, you just rewound to that moment in the past exactly as you were, that you would might make a different choice? That's not as many hands. There's a few more now. Maybe it's me. Think about those two ends. If you believe that your choices in the future, your choices now will affect different futures, you're also believing you have the possibility of making different choices. But if you think that if you rewound it, you're like, well, if I had the same information, I was in exactly the same mood, and all the same things are happening around me, like nothing's changed, well, then obviously I'd make the same choice then you kind of believe in a fixed destiny. It is impossible for you to make a decision that will always be affected by your previous actions and thoughts. There you go. Lastly, the government should not permit the sale of health treatments which have not been tested for safety and effectiveness. Uh, alternate, alternative and complementary medicine is as valuable as mainstream medicine. Alternative and complementary medicine has not been tested for safety and effectiveness. So you can't believe both of those things at the same time. Um, acupuncture has not been tested for safety and effectiveness in a whole host of creature treatments. A lot of people do it anyway. 
Um, and this is not to put down any particular culture. If we test something and it works, what do you call it? Medicine. medicine. It just becomes medicine. Um, so all the stuff that works, you just put in the basket of medicine. Just so you're aware, though, what we call Western medicine is only about 70 to 80 percent tested. At least 20 to 30 percent of it is just stuff we do and hope it works. There's still a lot of stuff that we don't really test in, in medicine, and we're just really hoping. Okay, we're after time. And I brought it in. I have a little bit of homework. You don't have to finish it, but I want you to look at it and think about it tonight. Take it on your way out. It's a question here, and I want you to think about what kind of question it is. It is a scientific question, an ethical question, a religious question, a legal question, a cultural question. Take one on your way out. Now you don't have to do it to directly in your binders. If you turn your binders up, there you go. 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 There you Thank you.